Okay, so here we are back again with our official edition of the Ohio Cast podcast, brought to you by Defense Soap, Defense Soap, the film which you built, Barbarian Apparel, and OAC, our part, our partners at Ohio Athletic Committee. Tonight's guest is 25 year official Denny All. Denny, how are we doing tonight? Good man, excited to be here. This is my second official podcast interview of my life, so I'm getting to be a pro at it. Well, that's perfect, man. Uh, so you got a little experience. Who, who were you on with last time? Uh, I was on Bryce Ross technical explanation uh, about. That's been about uh, maybe four years ago. Okay, so, and and Bryce is he works with OAC. His uncle is uncle. Or his dad is Jude, and his cousin is Jared Opper. So he knows. Yep. Uh, he knows where we're coming from now. You've got a unique backstory because you went from two extreme opposites in the in the Midwest, I guess is what I'll say. You went from the hills and the mountains of West Virginia to the flatlands of Northwest Ohio. Am I correct in that? In that state? Correct. 12 years ago, and uh, I'm still not used to it. I'm still not used to corn everywhere. I'm still not used to the wind is like crazy. I don't know if I'll ever get used to it, man. Okay, so I did, we did a kind of almost an opposite swap. Um, I went from Northwest Ohio, Oak Harbor. You're in, where are you at now? I live in Tiffin. So okay. uh, right, like if out my backyard, I can see Tiffin Columbia in high school. Okay, so you're in Tiffin and you work in Fremont, correct? Yes, I'm a, I'm a teacher at Fremont Ross High School. Okay, so the Little Giants. Hey, Little Giants are the state champ three or four years ago, right? Uh, yeah, Ethan Green, um, he uh, was a heavyweight and took officiating class with me. So, Really? Yes. Yeah, he took it at uh, Fremont Ross. We teach it at Ross. Uh, we'll get into that today, I'm sure. Um, okay. He, he, I think he's still at Cincinnati playing football. And a monster, 6'7". Yeah. Monstrous, won a state title, knocked off. Uh, it was a great great weight class he won, man. That guy's a stud. And uh, Division one football. He, yeah, yeah. He, he won uh, the – I think he beat the Wadsworth guy. He beat a bunch of different guys. He beat a yeah. bunch of different good uh, – Huber Heights Wayne guy is who he actually beat. Padilla. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, I believe it was Padilla. Dude, yeah. Ethan Green's the real deal. Yeah. He's just had so much reach on guys. It was unreal. Dude, his length is crazy. Yeah. So he's like one of those unique guys, you know, and one of those guys we're going to look back in Ohio, I think, like, and be more impressed with his body of work. Because that's really hard to do. You know, he was a, a high-level football player, a D1 football player. And um, being a heavyweight, and obviously we know how those two, wrestling and football, are married together. I mean, there's there's no question about it. But talk to me about officiating for 25 years. You've also had a different split in officiating. Where have most of your years, a majority of your years, have been where officiating? Uh, well, I was in West Virginia. Um, so... It goes back, um, you know, after I got done wrestling in high school and, and when I and when I was done, I went back to my high school, got a teaching job and I was an assistant coach. And one of the things they do in West Virginia is no matter what the sport is, every head coach has to turn in a rules test. The state, the rules test, the same ref, the same ones the referees have to take. They got to take it. Um, and you don't have to get any passing grade. You just have to turn one in before your school is allowed to compete. So it's like a head coach duty thing. Well, my head coach was a first year coach. I was the assistant. And he said, hey, I, I don't have time for this. You, you've you been a registered referee. This is going to be all you. Um, so I uh, I took it and I flew through it. And I thought, man, I, I, you know, I know wrestling. I've been doing this my whole life. And turns out um, I would not be allowed to referee if I had to pass the referee score. And my score was not high enough to become a referee. So it was then that I said, you know, maybe I shouldn't be yelling at these refs or getting on these refs like I have been or, or thought about, I knew was, I thought that I was right. Um, so I, I said, I'm going to become an official. And I took the, uh, you know, took the class seriously, took the test, did very well, got certified. And, and then it's just been uh, reffing ever since and a little bit of coaching in and out, but mostly officiating. How many years officiating in West Virginia? How many years officiating in Ohio? It was 16 in West Virginia, and now this is my ninth year in Ohio. Coming up, it'll be my ninth season in Ohio. All right. What pulled you to the Flatlands? How did you end up in Northwest Ohio? Uh, well, you know how most guys are. They follow the women. And uh, it's kind of a funny story. I went to uh, Ohio Bike Week uh, up in Sandusky with my buddies. We went for several years just riding Harleys up here at the lake in the summertime. 
And I uh, met this woman on the elevator. We hit it off, started talking. And for two years, we drove back and forth from uh, Upper Sandusky is where she's from. And she was living there. And uh, I had I had no real connection to stay in West Virginia. I had family there, obviously. But um, uh, she had two kids from a previous relationship. And I had nothing holding me back kid wise. So I moved to Ohio. Um, turned out as an educator, it was a lot better uh, pay. And uh and I got hired at Tiffin Columbian, taught there for two years, and then I've been at Fremont ever since then. So that's how I ended up here. When is she going to come in with a broom and start hitting you and hitting pans together and making a lot of noise like she vowed she would? Is that happening or not? Not yet. I haven't said anything too stupid yet. So, uh, but you know, that's the signal that you're being stupid. Whatever you're saying is, I hear loud pans. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we've had you know Toby Dunlap on uh, on the show here. Uh, Elliot Spence, you know, and I, I like to think that we want to get officials who have some pretty elite insight on the sport of wrestling. What comes with that usually, and what I've noticed is it's not always, but normally there's a pretty um, lengthy background in the sport of wrestling. And Toby's uh, background, you know, Toby's been um, doing it for over 40 years in the state of Ohio and, you know, did over 30 years as an official on the whistle. Um, his background, he went to Fairport High School. Elliot was an NCAA finalist. What is your background in the sport of wrestling, Denny? Um, so I'm from Williamstown, West Virginia. When you think about West, West Virginia wrestling, you think about Parkersburg usually. The two schools there, Parkersburg South and Parkersburg High School, um, always have solid teams. Lately, it's been wheeling in the mix a little bit. But I was from the small school outside of Parkersburg, and it was called – it was Williamstown High School. And we, we were the, in the smaller division. Parkersburg was a bigger division, so we didn't get the publicity they did, but we had a very good wrestling program too. Um, had two state championships in the team in the eighties. My brother was a state runner up and he's 12 years older than me. So when I was coming up, uh, they, they were winning the state championships. And I, you know, I thought, well, wrestling is pretty cool. I think I should do it. And I went out when I was like in kindergarten, um, and moved up all the way, wrestled all the way throughout high school. My senior year, I was the state champion at 160, um, went on to West Virginia and was on the team at West Virginia, um, where I found out that I am not a division one wrestler really quickly. And <laughs> thank uh, you for your honesty. I appreciate yes. your honesty. Uh, maybe, maybe over recruited. Um, but you end up being like, you got, the, there's roles on teams, just as you all well know, that like practice fodder was kind of my, my uh, guy, you know, I was a guy that could could drill with the all American level guys. I could, you know, wrestle with them, but I never was going to beat them. I just wasn't that talent. Um, I was telling a kid this today at school. I said, every time you move up a level, the, the main thing you got to get used to is the speed. And I just never caught up to the speed of college wrestling at that level. Um, back then it was the nineties and West Virginia was the, uh, that was a still, still to today is the highest they ever finished. Um, they were seventh in the nation when they had it at Cleveland state. Um, had a handful of All-Americans, and one of the All-Americans was from my high school, Mike Mason. He was third in the nation. Um, so he was my – he's the guy that kind of got me there. He's the guy that kind of uh, would get me up in the middle of summer, make me work out when I didn't want to. But, you know, sometimes that's the difference between being All-American and being on the team. Um, Brutus Jones was on the team. So you Greg. actually were able to bridge the gap. Were you there at, at all for Greg Jones then? Or I know you're, we're older than Greg Jones, but – yeah. He was, he was after me. I was long gone after, uh, I graduated in, uh, 2000. And what year did you graduate high school? 96. So 96. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I just real quick. How many years were you on the team at WVU? Three, three years. Okay. And I fight this battle with a lot of the, and I don't fight the battle, but I'm out and I'm, I want to promote the sport of wrestling and I want Lake Erie college to get guys. I want West Lib to get guys. I want, um, um, the lower level D ones, the max to be able to get guys, yeah. but everybody, um, seems to have this D one or bust mentality. You're a state champ in the sport of wrestling in West Virginia, a pretty good wrestling state, right? Um, it's not like it's Arkansas, right? West right. Virginia, Agreed. you got rough, rough and tumble guys. You compete with against a lot of those OVA school, OVAC schools. Um, some of the teams are up in the Ironman. So you guys know competition and you're right there with PA, right? You're, yeah. you're, you're in the heart of Pennsylvania. Um, mm -hmm. so it, it's good wrestling country, right? Let's just say that, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I would say it doesn't have the depth of Ohio, Pennsylvania, just because of the population, but 
every now and then you get guys that can compete at, at any level. Yeah, I mean, your Braxton's Amos is, you know, yep. he, he's pretty good, right? Like Braxton Amos, he, he's pretty good, right? Yeah, Phil like Cottrell, Phil yeah. Cottrell, right? He's a West Virginia guy. He's pretty good, right? Like yep. guys are pretty good, the guys we're talking about, right? They're, yeah, Cottrell was out of my uh, conference that I my school was in. Yeah, um, but long story short, are we too focused on, on – D1 or bust. Do you feel like, you know, you're now you're officiating it for 25 years. You wrestled at the division one level. You were a state champ in high school. Do you feel like we're too D1 or bust? Um, I feel like it's, it's very enticing when the D1s come knocking and, and I'm not saying knocking like coaches knocking on the door. I'm just saying any kind of uh, uh, media that you get from them, you know, when you're, when you're 16, 17 years old, that that's big to you. I mean, you don't, you don't really know yet. Like for me, example, when I grew up in West Virginia. West Virginia University is the only, you know, competitive school as far as being on the map. Um, you know, you got your West Libs and some of your other schools. Uh, but if West Virginia comes knocking, you, it's very enticing. So um, I think we do have a little bit of D1 or bust. But, um, you know, I think maybe a lot of kids are going to the D1 and then coming back down into D2. I don't know. Um, I don't follow it as close as I used to uh, back when I was competing and right after competition. But I think it, I hear, I'm, I'm a teacher at school. Fremont Ross has some athletes and you hear them all the time. They got that D one vibe going all the time in the school. Toledo wants me for football or uh, a lot of the Mac schools come knocking and, you know, and sometimes they make it, sometimes they don't. And your head football coach is Chad Long, correct? Yes. Yep. I told you that guy used to beat the absolute breaks off me, right? Yep. Did you confirm it with him? Because I don't. It's yeah. not too hard to confirm, right? Uh, I talk to him uh, every morning on the way to work. We talk. Um, you know, this time of year because I, I, I officiate football as well. He's he's drilling me with football stuff. But um, our families are friends. Our kids are friends. We talk a lot. He was the first guy I met in Ohio. Um, but yes, I, I did. I said, hey, I talked to Zeb last night. He's like, uh, he said you used to thump on him. He's like, he's like, well, I did, but but he got a lot better. He goes, it it wasn't like like it started out. So. Uh, he confirmed everything you said, and and he's still bitter about you guys beating him in football. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they beat us when it counted in the in yeah. The, uh, yeah, and then I told you I live in the Kenston district. My kids are gonna go to Kenston. Okay, um, they go to Kenston right now. The K- Kenston's a K twelve campus. Okay, it is a. I'm gonna tell you this right it's now. Small. Kenston's the Taj Mahal. It is not small. It's it not, is small, not case. small. It is On not a K through twelve campus. Wow. It is not small. It is not a small school. Um, it is four buildings right now. Oh it's wow! Four buildings right now, and they're gonna go down to three here. It sounds like. Um, but we're gonna build. We're gonna knock down two eventually and build another Taj Mahal. Um, okay. Football stadiums at the top of a hill overlooking Geauga County. It's wow. beautiful. Oh, Got nice. a windmill. It's a beautiful place. But the Clyde Flyers beat. The Kenston Bombers and the 95 state championships, 1995 state championships, in the lowest scoring game in really? football final history in any division in Ohio. What are we talking? Like two nothing or three? Three nothing. nothing. Three, three nothing. nothing. Okay. State champion Justin Shagnon for the Clyde okay. Flyers punch kicked a field goal. Three nothing. Flyers first first drive of the game. <laughs> okay. Okay. And well, then he beat us in the playoffs with a punch kick 10-7. Okay. Well, what I'm taking away from that is Chad Long didn't win the state championship like he likes to, you know. Shagnon did. Yeah, yeah, the kicker got it. Okay, good. Yeah, but the kicker was a state champion in wrestling. Oh, great. Okay. (laughs) Well, all them guys are wrestlers. Yes, but he only got to be a one-time state champ because he didn't wrestle his senior year. Oh. He won as a junior, and then they won the team title. They had three champs, and Chad Long was a qualifier. Okay. Yeah, he was on multiple championship teams where he had a, a pivotal role. So, yes, that guy tougher than a two dollar steak, athletic. Obviously, you know the families are great families. Um, yeah, and and man, yeah, he got my brother Tate too. For the record, he didn't oh, okay. just beat up on me. He got my brother Tate too. So he's beating up the family. I got he just beat the whole family up. But I think my brother Chad got Ray at one point. Oh. We weren't we weren't over against the Longs. We did. Okay. We did get him at one point okay. with my older brother Chad. So Ray's a scary dude. Ray's I don't want to be in a dark alley with Ray Long at this point. I think I'm good. No, 
No. Um, I could maybe outrun him at this point. I don't know though, but if he got within arm's reach, I'd probably be in a bad spot. I mean, I think he I think he could kick it in gear if he was mad. I don't know. Yeah, He's yeah, super yeah. nice guy now and super family guy, but you know, there's you can tell that's in him somewhere. I like it. Uh okay. So you come to Northwest Ohio, you meet Chad Long, um, you get into officiating here, you're in yep. education, you're a teacher. Talk to me about officiating and talk to me about your journey through officiating. Obviously, in West Virginia, you were an assistant coach. They had a different setup where you had to take a test. You sure. didn't do so well on the test. And then that's when you kind of gravitated to the sport of wrestling and officiating, correct? Yes. Yeah. And I, and I was a football official at the same time. So um, the I kind of knew how the system worked as far as getting, getting into officiating, getting started, sending out uh, information to athletic directors and coaches and people. So you could get, so you could get out there and get some, get some time on the field or the mat. Um, so that helped me out. But another thing I did that helped me along with it was I went to Marshall university for my master's degree um, and Huntington, West Virginia is where the West Virginia state wrestling tournament's held. And my master's degree is in athletic administration and my internship for, to get my degree was to be the assistant state tournament director. Um, with Bill Archer, who's ran the state tournament in West Virginia. I don't know if anybody's ever not ran it. He's, uh, but, and I, I worked under him. And one of the things I got to do was when the referees came in, I had to, I had to meet with them, give them their little packet and they give them their little, you know, that you get some really nice souvenirs and things like that. Cause you officiated the state tournament and show them to their locker room. And as I'm showing them in um, was, was an eye opening experience for me as far as, they weren't talking about wrestling and they weren't talking about who's going to beat who and who's going to have whatever match. They were talking about their kids. They were talking about what they're going to do after the season, vacations, jobs, retirements, weddings. And I'm like, you are just regular guys, man. They're not after, they're not out to get me or get wrestlers or, you know, even though that they're portrayed like that sometimes. So that, that part of it was in my head about becoming a wrestling official too. And then I go become assistant coach and I, you know, you know, it's all, it, it goes from there. Um, so that's that was an eye opening experience in itself was just seeing officials as people more than just, you know, dream crushers or, or penalizers or whatever you want to call it. Um, and so I was really thankful for my experience at Marshall and being a part of learning how a state tournament goes and things like that. I'd wrestled in the state tournament and, you know, you know, it's a lot different wrestling in it than running it and all the all the pieces that go into a state tournament. Um and then, so I started, and then I, just like everybody else, I started out ref, officiating youth league. Um, I was going back and forth with a little bit of coaching and just, I was a single guy on a teacher salary and anything I could do to make extra money. So if I wasn't coaching, I was officiating. And then it gravitated more towards the officiating piece, which, which I kind of like a little more. Um, I, I know it sounds weird, but I, I like not caring who wins. I like uh, being a part of the sport. Um, and, and not having all the extra stuff that a coach has where you got to worry about grades, you got to worry about who's hurt, who's shown at practice, uh, you know, the parent stuff. And, and I just like going, getting the best seat in the house and then, and then getting to go home and, and not worry about anything else. I don't think about it after I go home. So that, and then after years, years, you get better, you get better and you get, you get to start doing some really big matches and really, uh, cool tournaments and, and, you know, move to Ohio and. Ohio's like phenomenal wrestling state. And I've, I've got to do two state tournaments. I've got to do uh, ref some big district matches. I've ref some big tournament matches. So uh, I'm just loving it right now, man. Have you done an Ironman yet? I have not done the Ironman. Um, would love to someday. Uh, that's, that's a, that's a hard club to get into and an easy one to get kicked out of. So, um, you know, maybe one day I hope, I hope to. Two state tournaments. Um, you guys rotate. It's a two on one off format. I do believe. Is that correct? You're you're correct. Yes. And where are you in that? And when was the last one you did? Um, I did. Let's see. I was off last year. I did the two previous two that year. So I was off twenty three. I was on twenty two and twenty one. Okay. So you are potentially back on. When would you find out if you were if you were going to wrap the state tournament? Um, the last two times when I got it, it was uh December. December, early January. So right, right at the new year's time. Have you seen some matches where it's gotten crazy, got heated? Um, have you, you know, the dream crusher stuff when we talk about that, have there been some heated situations 
Uh, have you reffed uh, Marcus Blaze? Have you reffed, uh, you know, our top guys in the state of Ohio? Have you, have you seen guys like that? Have you seen the elite of the elite? And and obviously, um, you'd have to be uh, living under a rock to not, not know who Marcus Blaze is or who the sure. St. Edward Eagles are, the, the the Graham Falcons, or, you know, the, 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 the powerhouses in the state of Ohio. Have you got to see those high-level competitors like I've just mentioned? Yeah, um, I had Blaze's district final this year, which I don't even remember who he wrestled uh, because I was, I've been on the Perrysburg district for the last several years, which is a meat grinder of a district. Um, Correct. <laughs> Correct. But, but, you know, um, go, going down through, you know, the, you know, there's going to be some big finals uh, and they kind of you just do this random thing in the locker room of who's going to do what final. And I just bounced into Marcus Blaze and I'm like, oh, huh, that's that's not going to be too bad. It's going to be, you know. I, I don't know many guys anywhere that's on his level that they can can even hang with him. And there wasn't that day, not, not to be disrespectful of anybody, but there just wasn't. And, uh, but probably one of the biggest matches I refed at the district was uh, Gallagher and Munguia. I had that final, um, both undefeated. Um, I think I'm saying his name, right? Munguia. M- uh, Munguia. Yeah. Enrique. Yeah, Mung- Enrique from Illyria. Yes. Enrique Munguia. I, you got it. I had that final uh, the first time they ever wrestled each other, both undefeated. Um, and, uh, Munguia takes Patty down and puts him on his back. Did he cradle him? Yeah. He, he nailed him. Like just, I, I think, I think Patty just let his guard down a little bit and, and put him on his back and, uh, got a near fall set on it. Um, I don't know how many times Patty Gallagher's given up near fall. Uh, coach takes me to the table and, and, and it was near the end of the period. It was a legitimate conversation. No, nothing. I wasn't offended by it. Um, checked with my assistant assistant said, yeah, it was good. And that's, that's the only question that the coach asked, was it in time? And I conferred that it was in time. Um, but Gallagher went on to win that match. And then I think he beat him uh, even worse a week later at the state tournament. He did. Yeah. Yeah. You, you're correct. And then I want to say Patty had uh fields from Brunswick at some point too. The weight class was loaded. Yep. That was and, the semi. Yeah. That was the semi. And then they got separated. Mm-hmm. I believe Mungia and Mungia, uh, yeah, he is just super dangerous. Enrique Mungi was super dangerous, but Patty Gallagher, what a pleasure. And um, he's from over here. He's a Jaga County guy. Okay. Um, and then would commute across town to uh St. Edward. But man, yeah, it, it's awesome when you get to see that caliber of wrestling. And obviously you were in WVU's room when you guys were elite and a top mm-hmm. ten one team. So you've seen it and you've seen some of the uh the guys we talked about from West Virginia. So you, I know you've seen some some uh, tougher than nails guys from PA and sure. Ohio, obviously too. But uh, let's talk about maybe uh, we as fans, parents, coaches, even um, get a little carried away, and sure. they, people, we really lose sight of. Um, and when I say we, I mean I'm I am a, a I'm a fan, I'm an uncle, and and you know I've lost sight before. I've lost. I've been you know, get emotionally caught up in things. But when the line gets blurred between you guys being human beings and then they just treat you like you're just not subhuman, mm-hmm. does that gets you. Does that bother you? It, it, I think one of the things that benefits me is that doesn't bother me. I've never, you know, lost my core. I, I mean, have I made mistakes? I tell the kids I teach all the time. If there's been an officiating mistake out there to make, I've made it. Um, and you got to own it. And you got to sometimes eat calls and stuff like that. But as far as being in the heat, I've had extremely heated matches um, and, uh, you know, big calls you had to make. I, I've made two of the biggest calls I've ever made in my life were in the Ohio State Finals. Um, and, uh, you know, I, 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 I've, I've been booed. I've been called names. And the way, I t- the way I teach my classes and the way I tell the kids is they're not yelling at me, the dad. They're not yelling at me, the human being or the husband or the or whatever, the friend. They're yelling at those stripes. They're yelling at my position. They're yelling at what I have to do, whether they like it or not. That's what they're yelling at. So I tell them all the time, you're get, your stripes are getting yelled at. You are not getting yelled at. And unfortunately, the number one reason we lose officials, which the average is two years, um, is because they don't they just can't take the criticism of the fans, coaches and things like that. They're just not ready for that. You, you know, able to handle that mentally. Um, but I, you know, my, my big push is they're yelling at the stripes. They're not yelling at you, the human being. 
what do you think besides, you know, hey, they're yelling at a position, not just they're not yelling you as a person. What else would you tell a young official and how, how can we retain and or add more officials to the sport of wrestling? And then you say you do football and these other mm. we're, we're in crisis mode, by the way, and everything and yeah. everything, whether it's umpires and uh, baseball, softball. We're in absolute crisis mode. I don't think people get it. What can we do to retain more or draw more people to the sport? Um, well, you know, OAC is taking a big step in the the mentoring ship, like where, you know, last year I mentored the majority of the kids that I had at Fremont in class. And some of the kids that took the class through me, not necessarily Fremont students, but in our area, Clyde kids had some Margareta kids and stuff like that. But um, I think when a known official, and, and I'm considering myself a known official in our area, um, show up. And, you know, you say, I'm here mentoring these kids. It really dials down that intensity. Like, I think it just does a great, a great step towards, okay, these kids are learning. They have a teacher here. They have a mentor here. And the, the people that know wrestling know who the local officials are that are the experienced guys. And when they see their presence there and that they're mat side and they're, they see them between matches, talking to the young kids and talking to the young officials. And just because, you're a young official doesn't mean you're necessarily a young person. I mean, I've had 40 year old guys get certified, 40 year old women get certified. And when they see you there working, I think that's a huge uh, step in the right direction as far as keeping them there. Cause they know they got a cushion. There's a pad between them, that hostile coach and them. And, you know, if I can be there and be the guy that the coach wants to yell at, or, or he might not yell at me cause he's no, I'm, I'm probably going to explain what the call was. Or I'm going to go out there and I'm going to help that official realize where they messed up. So being understanding of the coaches, being a buffer between young uh, officials and experienced officials, that's something that's obviously mentoring. Obviously, mentoring is a big part of anything you do. Obviously, teacher teachers, when they're first year, the, the most important thing to them usually is their mentor showing them the ropes. The same thing would apply to officiating and the sport of wrestling, football, whatever it may be, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like teachers are teachers. It doesn't matter what the, what the uh, platform is They're You know, I, I, I just came up as a teacher and worked with kids my whole life. So uh, it's just, I think it's second nature to me. And then um, I'll speak like on a guy like Laren Weichel, who wasn't necessarily a teacher, but was a really good wrestling instructor for officials. And he's a great person that, that has learned how to become an educator for what he does. And he works with the kids just like I do. Uh, getting getting them started, helping them out, you know, positive critiques. And that's what keeps them around, man. When they got, they know they got someone's got their back. You know what I mean? Yeah, Laren is, is pretty elite. He understands the sport um, and he's not afraid to tell people. He doesn't shy away from a confrontation or letting somebody know, hey, you're wrong, I'm right. And, and he, hey, sometimes you guys are wrong, right? <laughs> yeah. But true. you still have the authority. Yeah. Just like police officers are wrong sometimes, right? But they yeah. still have the gun and the badge, right? They st they're sure. still the ultimate authoritative figure, and you guys can remove people, and that's what people don't understand. Um, you know, they think that um, just because you guys are wrong, then they're allowed to be abusive, and that's not always the case. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, that 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 is correct. I can't tell you how many times I've I've messed up a call and then had to call a coach for unsportsmanlike conduct, um, because he's cussing at me, like he. he you know, when you go through the class and when you hear, hear the older officials talk, they say, you know, you got to be understanding. You got to listen to coaches, but never, ever under any circumstance do you have, does it, is it okay to take verbal abuse? And, yeah. and, you know, you can't, I just, I don't allow cussing. I mean, I just, just, you know, you can call, you can be upset with me, but don't take it to there. Yeah. I mean, boom, you're, you just got to know that it's, it's off limits and you're going to get hit. Yeah. You know, boom, you're going to hit them with it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and, and I don't have no problem doing that. I don't like doing it. I don't have to, I don't have to do it very often. Uh, I, I, was, I was counting up last year, I think maybe two unsportsmanlike likes on coaches all year. Gotcha. And I, and I ref all over the state. I didn't ref just local. I got all over the place and you know, I just, I don't know. Do you get to the mommy Bay classics and the Perrysburg invitationals and the Medinas and the GMV WA greater Miami Valley wrestling? Do you get, to um these there's big tournaments in columbus i think liberty has a huge one do you mm -hmm. get to any of those top gun do you get to any of these big tournaments um I, i've done the pit i've done the gorman um gorman's a big one yep yeah uh the hefner and austin town fitch i've done it a few times um d3 duels in sandusky um 
uh, what are some other ones? I, I've done, I've been in Columbus and did the whatever the one that's at Delaware Hayes. I, I can't remember what it's called. That's a tough tournament. That Delaware yeah. Hayes, some Perry's there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that one. My my school where I teach Riverside goes to that one. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and then you know you try to fit a couple of those big ones. You can't have those big bangers every week. Um. One, they're not going on every week, but and then you know our association feels a little bit. Uh, you know, responsible for our local area. So we do a lot. We stay in the local area a little bit too. But our local area is great wrestling. SBC tournament. I've done it for several years. Hey, hey, so, yeah, yeah, buddy. You're, you're an SBC guy. So uh, that's a phenomenal wrestling conference. Incredible so. wrestling conference. Hey, I got a brother who won a state title and never won the SBC. Yeah. I think I think there's more than one uh, person that has, I've heard that before. Yeah. There's, there's a couple. Yeah. I remember one year we had a champ champ. Well, he lost in the finals one year to a guy who won this. He won the title, and then my brother won the title. But my brother mm-hmm. was beaten by fourteen points and got headlocked. St. Mary's oh. Connor Whalen headlocked him and pinned him. <laughs> yeah, I, I had a kid in class last night. You telling me I can be winning by fourteen? He wasn't a wrestler. He said, "You telling me I'm gonna beat you fourteen nothing and still lose?" I said, "Yep." It's the greatest part of the sport. Yeah, and I said, "I said one move in two seconds and it's over, man." Okay, talk talk to me about um, a heated incident where maybe um, cooler heads luckily prevailed, but maybe a parent had to go. Or have you ever had to do that? Have you ever had to throw a parent out? Um, yes, I've had to throw a parent out. I've had to throw. I think maybe a, it seemed like a brother out. Sometimes you get them older brothers; they get pretty defensive over little brother, and and you know, um, but nothing like once you get to the point where we say you're leaving there's no going back there's no i'm sorry there's no okay i'll sit down now and be quiet once you've reached that level and we say you're gone um every time i've ever had to get to that level it it was an immediate shutdown of whatever behavior was happening whatever uh intense behavior was happening and they uh, they got walked out, whether it be a police officer or, or a, most of the time it's one of the school administrators there, um, because I think they all of a sudden realized I've took it too far and maybe I'm embarrassing myself. And but I've seen other guys, you know, I've seen it go the other way, too. I've seen I've seen it um, escalate. And once it gets to that point, the official is just out. of. Once we've decided you're gone, we're out of it. You know, it's not our responsibility to get you out of it. It becomes the score, the host's responsibility. Gotcha. So it, it's not really like, oh my gosh, I'm scared. What's going to happen? What? How's this going to get worse? I've seen it get worse. We had an incident at districts uh, a couple of years ago where, like, a whole mat disappeared because I don't know what happened. It was on the other end. I was I was refing mat one. It was on mat four, and they shut down every match at Perrysburg. Every t- mat got shut down while they took care of this. And I don't. Need, I still don't know what happened. It was a Brunswick kid and something else. Wow. Um, yeah, I still don't know what happened. Uh, but we got wild. Yeah, it, it was a it was a, a fan or, or a brother. Or I don't I don't know if it was a, who it was, but it, it someone won, someone lost, someone didn't like it, and all of a sudden we have an issue, and and it escalated really quickly. The mat literally got taken out of out of well, operation. Yeah, look, well, what I mean is the like the visual side of that mat disappeared because so many people were. Oh, okay, it. got it, got yeah, it. Got like it. that's what I mean. The back, all of a sudden you didn't there was see it anymore. People. Yeah, uh, one year at the state wrestling tournament in West Virginia. Um, two kids to start a fight mid match and, and the same kind of thing happened. Just people coming out of the stands, people, uh, uh, you know, security people running on the mat. They, they, they start, the two kids start fighting. They start rolling across multiple mats and we're shutting all the mats down until this is taken care of. And like, you know, kids are, it's, it's sad because maybe the kid was getting ready to score in the biggest match of his life and it gets shut down. And, you know, it's just sad that it gets to that. Melee. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you can't have that. That there's no place for the yeah, that has no. to get shut down. No, no I've seen not the UFC, dude. We don't go no. for their kids. And I, we just can't have that. I've seen kids in singlets taken out in cuffs while they still have their singlets on and their headgear. Like because they just lost and they lost their, their sense for a little bit. Okay, that sounds like that's just strictly a West Virginia thing you're saying. Well, we might do it a little different down there, you know. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about how. Someone can sign up to be an official. I talked to all you guys about this. Everybody, everything's pretty streamlined for you folks here in the state of Ohio for officiating, whatever, whether it's football. I believe it's all the same uh, platform, correct, on your on your smartphone? Yep. 
Yep. Now, uh, we, we no longer, when I started being an instructor, we were doing in-person classes. Um, so I was meeting with people one-on-one or sometimes three-on-one, whatever. And then we COVID hit, we go to, you know, Zoom's like a thing now. And, um, we started doing online classes. We offered online classes, but it was still through the, I'm teaching my own curriculum. Uh, it's the rule book and everything else, but now Dragonfly and the NFHS has, has a platform for the entire country, no matter what state. And everything is online now at your own pace. It's you're basically taking an online course when you sign up to become an official. Now, actually today in my class at Ross was sign up day for those that want to get certified. You don't have to get certified. And I signed up 12 kids today. Um, not all wrestling, just they can sign up for whatever sport they want. We had some soccer, we had some basketball, uh, football, wrestling, baseball. So um, my focus in my classroom, the way I teach it has changed where I, I would teach. You, you took my class, you became certified in football and wrestling. Now it's changed due to the online platform and the access of me being the instructor to open up the door for here's how we're going to set you up and you can become a soccer official because it's all the same process. Like you said, it's streamlined in the same process and uh, you log on, you set up your account, you pay for your class and you can start right away. I've had guys become certified in one day and then I've had people take months to do it. Um, and then you're there as the instructor is more of a liaison of if you got any questions. So you might be taking soccer class. I don't know anything about soccer, but, I could point you in the right direction of, okay, I'm going to go get the soccer coach at my school. I'm going to go find a soccer official to answer some of your questions and hook you up with him. That's how I operate now. Um, but, you know, if you're an adult, you, you just kind of go through it on your own. And more than likely, you have a basis foundation of the sport that you're wanting to officiate in. What class do you teach? What are, well, like, what are you certified in the state of Ohio to teach? Um, I have physical education, health education, intervention specialist, which I've done primarily most of my years. Uh, but I, I, I kind of do a way different role than that at Ross now. Um, I, I run the online school, which is similar to, uh, you know, how we become certified now. It's a program called Edgenuity. So kids that um, maybe they fail a class or for whatever reason they couldn't take a class or maybe they're trying to graduate early. They come to me and I set them up on the computer and they take their course. It's like um, a credit recovery almost. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, we, we do credit recovery and early grad. And then we've got, um, I, I do one of the seals uh, with a program called rise up and retail. The graduation seal. Yeah. You okay. can get a rise up seal for retail. And uh, it's, it's a program I just learned this year and uh, like the retail industry and learning the ins and outs of customer service and things like that. It's a seal you get on your diploma. Um, so I run, the, I run that. And then I teach the uh, officiating course, um, which is, we have the biggest class we've ever had right now. We're, awesome. we're almost, almost 30 kids in there. Talk to me more about Dragonfly and how it's a one-stop shop for officials. Okay. Like, like Dragonfly has united all aspects of athletics. So the athletic directors, the assigners, the referees, the coaches, the admit, school administrators are all, all part of Dragonfly. So like now when I get a game and I click on the key, it's a, a tab called key people. Um, it, it'll list all the other referees there. It'll list who's in charge of everything. It'll list uh, every athletic director of every school that's participating in case you had any kind of question or had an issue with any school. Um, so that's what it does. It, it done. It, it's brought, it's brought everybody to one spot. Um, and then as far as the getting certified, it's also there as well. So th that's, that's basically what's done. And let's say, um, so I go back home and I do a Christmas tournament at my old high school. Um, because I'm still certified West Virginia. And if, if you're Ohio school, because some Ohio schools come to that tournament, they're all in Dragonfly. They're all, because it's, it's united the whole thing. It's the National Federation of High School Sports is behind Dragonfly. So it just makes it easy. And I, I only work with the officiating part and the becoming certified part. I imagine like, let's say a kid transfers schools and, you know, you go, you go through all those hoops to become eligible or whatever it is. I'm sure that's, a lot of that's probably done with Dragonfly as well. Okay. Where can people access the to the entry gate to getting into officiating? Um, you know, we're sitting here talking about this. How mm -hmm. could we, where could we direct them as far as a website? Where can we direct that traffic to get someone to, to look into officiating the information about it? 
Okay. Uh, that's, that's what I was doing today. So it's right in my mind. OHSAA.org. There's a tab up there. It says officiating. You click that. It drops down. There's several uh, different roads to go down, but there's one that says become an official. You click that tab and the first link on it is the, how to start your dragonfly account. And that's how it takes you into, you, you make an account and then you click contest official and then it's going to give you all the sports available. You click what you say, I'm a, I'm a wrestling official and you click it. Um, it's going to recognize, well, wait a minute, this, this guy is not a wrestling official. And then it's going to put the class, it's going to load the class for you. Uh, then you have to pay. If you're an adult, it's seventy dollars. If you're a high school kid, it's forty dollars. Once you pay your fee, it, you have access to all the stuff to become certified, and you got to go through that process. And you have to also get your concussion certification, which is now on Dragonfly as well. The course to do that is on there. So once again, up- one stop shop, ohsa.org. You go to the mm-hmm. officials tab, and it's all listed right there. What yep. you can do, and then dragonfly will then be implemented and it will you'll be asked to sign up and create a jack dragonfly account and that's where you run from there right yep that's how you do it and then you know the, the other thing when you after you get done with your course that's where you get your assignments so uh i'm looking for a wrestling official i maybe i'm a school that i we don't host a lot of wrestling and i'm the athletic director i click on wrestling officials and it'll list all the officials available who don't have who are not scheduled somewhere that night and you can find officials there. It'll tell you their years of experience. It'll tell you what their class is, one, two, or three. Um, so you kind of know what you're getting into. What do you ultimately want, whether it's high school students to become certified, young officials to become a certified yourself? What do you guys, what ultimately is the end goal here for you? And what do you want people to be able to get out of becoming officials? And what do you want to be able to give back to people and, and let them know about officiating? What do you want to get out of officiating? Um, well, at this point I I've met, you know, a lot of my goals by, you know, be, being, uh, chosen to do a state tournament in two different States, uh, you know, being chosen in Ohio is quite an honor. Um, but my, my next goal is I would like for, um, someone that I taught the class to, to get, to, to get selected for the state tournament. Um, and, but what I tell kids, and I think, I think this kind of answers what you're, you're asking me is. I get camaraderie out of officiating. Um, my, my best friends in my life right now are our fellow officials. I'm going to weddings. I'm going to, you know, but we're buying uh, baby gifts for guys that have babies. Um, it just it's opened up a whole new realm of friendship that I have. Um, but we all still have a common goal. We love wrestling. We love football. Um, it's the it's the going there. It's, it's having fun. It's being it's it's serious fun. All right. Um, when I was competing, it was fun because you're trying to win. Now I'm not. I'm not trying to win anymore. Uh, I'm just trying to be a part of the game. I'm trying to stay around the sport, and you know, I hopefully am a good example of what kids and younger officials want to be like. That's my goal: is to be a good example for the younger generation, and in hopes that they say, you know, what, I want to be where he is one day, and I want to be able to uh, stay with the sport and, and just be a part of it and. And I tell people all the time, especially these high school kids, I say, you know, I, I, I might hang out with one or two of the people I went to high school with. I'm 46. I might hang out with a couple of people I went to high school with. And it's not all the time. And they're probably not the first person I call. But if I needed something right now, it'd be another official that I would call. You know, most of my guys that I reach out for help for, like if I needed to borrow something, is probably some sort of official. Okay. Last thing I'll last question I have for you. What do you want uh, legacy? Do you want to leave as a teacher? You know, we're both teachers. Okay. What do you want kids to say about you uh, when it's all said and done, whether it's a West Virginia kid you taught or an Ohio kid you taught, what do you want? Them uh, to- I, I want them to say whether I wanted to or not, Mr. All tried to help me, whether I accepted it, whether I, whether I cared about it, you know, when they become older and they, they, you know, become more mature, um, I want him to look back and say, I had Mr. All and that guy cared about me. He, he tried to help me do something. He tried to tell me to do the right thing. He helped me with my grades. He tried to push me in the right direction. That's all I want to say. He's like, that, that guy was a good guy in my life and he helped me. I like it. I, listen, I hope they say that about me. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I can get the same. Yeah, I like that. I might be stealing your answer now. I take it, man. I that's a good, that's really a ask me, but <laughs> I'm the one usually <laughs> asking all the questions, but they ever do that i think that's a pretty good answer you know we're always giving effort into all the kids right you gotta 
Yeah. Whether they want to take it or not, you got to still deliver, right? Well, yeah, teaching, I tell kids all the time, we're, we're paid to care about you. That's what teaching is. We're paid to care. Um, whether you want us to care or not, that's what we're paid to do. So, um, but, you know, I, I just, I, I, this, this opportunity, never when I started my teaching career 20 some years ago, did I, did I ever think I was going to get to teach football and wrestling officiating or officiating in general? Um, what an awesome, like, cool thing I get to do every day. Um, I get a whole hour of the day where I get to talk about sports and, and help kids learn them better, you know, because my class is offered, you know, let's say you don't want to become official, but it's going to make you a better athlete. If you're a wrestler, it's going to make you better knowing the rules better. If you're a football player, it's going to make you better. Um, so, because not everybody in the class gets certified because it, it is a phys ed elective. So um, I've had, I've had girls in there say, I just want to watch football with my dad. And I don't know what the heck he's talking about when he's screaming at the TV and he seems to like it. So I want to hang out with dad and I want to learn it more. And I was like, I was like, that's an awesome reason to take this class. Yeah. I want to hang out with dad more or, you know, whatever. So um, it, it's got a lot of benefits. I mean, I love it. Actually today in class, we were showing, uh, we were showing one of your videos. So I had the state finals match a few years ago, Bennett from Ed's and uh, the kid from Dublin Kaufman. Ayub. Ayub. Yeah. I had it when the, the, the one, the, not last year's year before when, a, you've scored all the points right at the end. Three ones back at the end. Yeah. And it was your video where you're like, he's getting near fall. And you, you kind of, you know, like the whole crowd was going crazy. Um, I was showing that. And uh, one of the kids said, well, where do you get these videos? I said, actually, I'm going to be online with that guy tonight, man. So, there you go. Kind of funny. You're part Show of the this. class. Show you're, you're, this. You're in. Yeah. You're in the class, bud. You're part. I'm going to make you an associate teacher. I got to get you uh, some stickers. I owe you some stickers. I use some go okay, stickers. I got I got a boatload of them. I'll have to hook you up. Um, well, Denny Oh man, I, I'll tell you what, I learn a lot. I like hearing. Is there anything else you got for me? Any officiating stories or anything else you got for me tonight? Um, no, we, we you know, I just, I love that. My, my favorite thing about what I do is being from West Virginia, not from being around here. Just the other night when we were talking, you were, you were name dropping guys. And I'm like, I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. But I like not knowing the history of the area, even though I know a little bit now, I really like, I don't know the old rivalries. I don't know. I hear about them, but you know, I'm like, that's my favorite part about being not from here is when I, you know, I hear oh, his dad and his dad and this guy's dad, and they were battling back in the water. And I'm like, I don't care, man. I don't know who those people are. And that's my favorite part about fishing. I don't care who wins and I don't know who you are. And I'm going to blow the whistle and we're going to figure it out, man. Okay. All right, here we go. You ready? Yeah. Oh, so, this guy. Oh, man. What school is it from? I need the school. That would be that, an Ohio State Buckeye. UFC heavyweight champion from Sandusky, Ohio. Oh, uh, CA champion. Yeah. Rest uh, in peace. Randleman. Kevin Randleman. All right. Yeah. Um, so we know Kevin Randleman. I know him. Okay. The other night, I actually had Sandusky Junior High down here in football, and there was a Randleman on the team. I'll tell you what, I love to see it. I love to see it. Hey, one of my favorite, like my favorite athlete of all time, I think, is Kevin Randleman, definitely. Here, yeah. here we go. Here's some more. This is right. We're in my office, right? We're in my right. office. Give me, give me, give me. Oh, man. Look at that dude. dude I ain't messing with that dude. Both, I'm not both pieces. Autograph. Nice. And then um, my son, Ferdinand, was born on February 12th. 2016 kevin passed february 11th okay 16 so they kind of passed in the night you know kind of yeah souls yeah. passed in the night man yeah i, knew I you'd know that one okay i knew you'd know that one i knew that um you know i'm a, i teach at ross so that's woodson right i always get Charles woodson there yeah uh i know pace it was a, was a sandusky guy yep um but i talked mark to coleman Tech mark coleman Coleman, yeah, he's St. Joe guy. Yeah, it's St. Right? Joe. St. Joe. Yep. Art Kerr. Uh, so a, Art Kerr. Iserman uh, was a Fremont guy. I hear John Cahill talk about him a lot. Um, but like I said, I you know moving here, I didn't know. I, I'm interviewing at Fremont Ross, and I'm like, "What's that? What's that cool looking football trophy over there?" They're like, uh, "That's a Heisman replica. Like we have a Heisman winner." I'm like, "What?" <laughs> you know, I no Only idea. defensive player to ever win yeah. the Heisman. <laughs> And I'm a Raiders fan. The Raiders are my team. So 
Uh, Super Bowl champion. Yeah, Dude, yeah. What did he play? 18 NFL seasons? Something insane yeah. like that. I mean, he was around for a while. Um, you know, no Super Bowl and, champion. I, I just I, I didn't even know. I was late for my interview with Fremont because I couldn't find it. And it's not like it's hard to find. Yeah, it's right off 20. Yeah, I know. And I, <laughs> I, I still got the job. I don't know how I got the job. I was, I was like 10 minutes late for the interview because I couldn't find it. Which well, is crazy. It's your beaming personality, which I've learned about yeah. and I like it. And, yeah. and being fair. Hey, being fair. I think being fair goes a long way. But, um, Denny, it's been a pleasure. I appreciate you coming on tonight. Denny Hall, our guest tonight for the official edition of the Ohio Cast podcast. Denny, stick around. We'll talk a little bit afterwards here, all right? All right. Awesome, man. I appreciate you having me on. That was a lot of fun, man. All right. Thanks, brother.